I'm Cal Penn, and this is Getting Warmer. We hear a lot about climate change endangering the planet, but the planet is going to keep going for millions of years. It might rearrange some continental plates, maybe dabble in dinosaurs again, who knows? It's got plenty of time. The danger, obviously, that we're really talking about here is how climate change will impact us. So let's focus this episode on a place where a lot of us live, cities. 56% of the world's people currently live in cities, which is expected to increase to 68% by 2050. Cities are directly in the crosshairs of climate impacts, so they need to be prepared. But right now, they're not. Record-setting temperatures topping 104 degrees, fueling raging fires across London. A record amount of rain fell on Manila on Saturday. The partly submerged city of Zhangjiao. Its subway system now an underground river. The New York City subway system shut down overnight. This is a fire that erupted during the morning rush hour along the busiest interstate there in the city. Increasingly frequent heat waves are placing a massive strain on cities, causing failed power grids, buckled roads, melted airport runways, and even melted electrical cables that look something like they're out of Jurassic Park. And hold on to your butts, because that's actually just the heat, okay? Many cities have outdated drainage systems, so heavy rain can cause devastating floods. Here in New York City, in September of 2021, over three inches of rain fell in a single hour. And if you've ever been here, you know that this city is mostly steel, glass, concrete, and piles of garbage. So that rain didn't get soaked up into the ground. Roads turned into rivers. And tragically, several people drowned in their own apartments. That's horrific, and it could get much worse. In the coming years, intensifying heat and storms will stress urban infrastructure already weakened by decades of underinvestment. And that means cities are facing a crisis of infrastructure adaptation. Now, I know there's a lot of crises to keep track of these days, so if you're organizing alphabetically, this one goes between inflation and K-pop military service. When it comes to adapting cities to climate change, there are tons of incredible imaginative plans. And they usually come with beautiful artist renderings that make you think, oh, yes, that looks amazing. Oh, I'd love to live there. Look at those windmill. Oh my God, is that a person in a hammock? I love hammocks, let's do this, let's do this right now. Unfortunately, redesigning cities is an incredibly expensive and slow process, especially here in America. Take rapid transit, which desperately needs to be upgraded in several cities. The Green Line extension in Boston has been under construction for three decades. And in New York, the Second Avenue subway extension costs $2.6 billion per mile. There's no single reason for the high costs and delays. It ranges from overdesign to understaffing to a lack of expertise since, you know, the last time we built a bunch of infrastructure in the United States was in the 1940s. But look, whatever those important reasons are, and they are important to keep in mind, the end result is that less infrastructure gets built. And that's bad, because climate change is kicking in our front door. And we need to start adapting yesterday. Thankfully, some cities have started to take action, although often as a reaction to tragedy. Seoul recently moved to ban construction of its underground apartments, like the ones in the movie Parasite, after a massive rainstorm drowned several people in their homes. And it took Superstorm Sandy in 2012 for New York City to get serious about prepping for climate change.